I'm presenting Gay's responsive uh, comfort evaluations method, uh, which is a research topic that I've worked with the last uh, six years while uh, at uh, EPFL, Lipid Lausanne, uh, directed by Marilyn Anderson and uh, Jan Winot. Um, uh, the idea of this presentation was to uh, show how, uh, from, a, uh, from, from an idea, we went to, to an application uh, when working with this uh, gaze responsive comfort evaluations uh, method, uh, which is aligned with uh, the Wheelox team of From Knowledge to Practice, somewhat. Uh, so the focus of this uh, research topic was, um, was the eye uh, and how uh, how it responds to uh, the daylight being filtered through um, a building skin and uh, bu building skin um, and observing its behavior and reactions to the to the light. So this was the core of the the core of the study. Uh, so after all, architecture is judged by uh, rolling eyes and moving head. Said Le Corbusier. Uh, what we were exploring was to how to, uh, of course, see this uh, behavior and see, see the, uh, observe these uh, uh, responses to light, but also how to be able to present them in the space. Uh, so eye. Uh, eye is uh, not a large organ in our body uh, with a very uh, simple, let's say, um, uh, anatomy that uh, has a main function of directing the light on uh, uh, our visual sensory. Uh, but it's uh, quite interesting that it already contains 70% of our sensory receptors in our body. That's a lot of sensors, right? Uh, which enables us to see and also, of course, affects, um, help, helps us in, enhance our biological needs and uh, has effects on our health and well-being. So how does it do it? Uh, normally how we look at the space is by scanning the whole uh, scene, uh, by moving our eye and by moving our head and body, uh, which each of them in a, uh, within its own range. Uh, and by doing that, uh, we receive the light on the direction of our gaze. Uh, and of course, within a certain field of view, which is uh, somewhat limited. So this is how the eye is functioning. And how we uh, try to uh, capture this or imitate this in, um, uh, with the methods that we have is uh, normally either using uh, HDR images uh, with uh, multiple expo exposure uh, photography, uh, using uh, cameras like that, or we can uh, do it uh, uh, in rendering. Uh, why we would want to uh, imitate uh, or understand like how uh, the, the light is perceived uh, in in our eyes. So the main um, one of the main um, uh, and more interesting way of using it at the moment is uh, at least in daylighting is uh, when we want to observe uh, glare, which uh, either in the buildings is a situation that we have that is either uh, impairing our uh, visibility or uh, it uh, creates negative responses. Uh, so these methods are used to, to understand glare. And um, uh, why we do it? Because it's, of course, uh, very relevant for us to, to reduce these, these conditions. Um, so let's go back and see how, how we do it uh, in well, I don't want to say in practice, but um, how we go about understanding and when we have these uh, photometric measures made, uh, what do we do with them? Uh, so uh, what we do is try to uh, use this um, visibility measure and uh, derive it from these kind of images. Uh, and uh, here what we have, so this is a sort of a simple contrast uh, ratio, which looks for um, glary areas and then their size and how they relate to the luminance that the eye is adapted to and it also looks for where these glary sources are uh, and uh, basically tries to find all of this in relation to where we are looking at which we talked about uh, before and uh, finally get an understanding of um, if there are any glary so um, areas in our, in our field of view. 
Um, I would uh, like to emphasize that uh, all those measures are directional, they are, they are view direction dependent, they are gaze uh, dependent, and uh, this is not seen. And normally how we do it at, the, at least the measurement phase is uh, uh, thinking about the fixed, ways, uh, fixed uh, gaze directions. Um, let's zoom out a little bit. So what does this mean in the design? So this was on the measurement phase and how we try to understand it while having a photometric measurement uh, um, that is representing the eye. At the uh, design phase, the way it happens is that, okay, let's say we design this building, amazing, um, a lot of uh, um, uh, windows and quite variable. Uh, and then we are sitting in there and uh, thinking like, okay, what is the photometric behavior um, of this building? How uh, is it glary? Is it not? Uh, is it uh, good? Is it bad? And how are, we, how are we perceiving it in the at the eye level? So of course we have a huge range of uh, view direction and gaze direction to think about. And actually when we do these measurements, we have to decide on that. We have to um, decide on uh, where this person is and make a decision on where they are looking at. Uh, so, and this point could not be, could be also another point or it could be a grid of points. But the point is what we want is to understand this photometric behavior uh, perceived at the eye. And uh, at the moment we don't have that possibility. So uh, to uh, enhance those, um, uh, like refine those measurement uh, stages, and uh, also to uh, observe this gaze uh, um, light behavior, um, uh, we did experiments, experiments with uh, six uh, lighting situations where we were capturing um, the, the uh, lighting conditions with, the, with these cameras. Uh, and um, I was using uh, this uh, beautiful eye tracker which was enabling me to not only look at the eye movements, but also uh, the head and body movement of the people, uh, which after like a hideous process, I could finally get a room reference gaze uh, directions. And by having those, um, I could re-simulate them in the same environment and see where people were actually looking at while they were attending my experiments. So as you can see, people are looking at everything. <laughs> but uh, this is not actually the case. Like if you process these, you can see uh, where are the main fixation points. And uh, that is what we use uh, in order to derive, not the, the to, so, so in order to go from these fixed uh, measures to gaze-driven uh, measures, which uh, Peter Boyce, maybe some of you of course know him, he called for me uh, gaze-driven photometry. So this stage was developed. And uh, based on those uh, data uh, and this method that we developed, um, I explored task lighting condition and view uh, and their effect on the gaze behavior on different stages. Uh, so as you can see here, um, uh, you can see the visualized data. When it comes to task, what we, uh, we could see was that uh, it really overrides everything. So no matter here, the colors are showing how, um, yeah, the lighting levels. So no matter what the lighting level is, like even if it gets extreme and if it's really glary, still people focus on the task which is quite important because uh, the, the way we set the room, the way we design the layout actually is really shaping um, and changing um, uh, a person's daily exposure to light and exposure to these conditions. So it's quite an important thing to think about. Um, and when it comes to um, different lighting conditions and view, uh, we had these results. So um, in these uh, conditions, people were not working with a specific task. They were either thinking or they were on the phone. Uh, behavior that we could see most was that uh, there was this, uh, most of our um, red dots, which is on the higher luminance level where they were exposed to glare, were falling inside the room, whereas uh, the green ones, which were light levels that were lower and uh, bearable, they were always focusing outside. So uh, what we could um, we derive from that, that, that there is this attraction avoidance gaze behavior. And also we could see the importance of view or uh, any other kind of uh, replacement of interior stimuli uh, that could help people uh, see 
uh, or balance their gaze behavior. Uh, and then going, so again, we saw this uh, attraction and avoidance behavior. So how did we go about um, bringing this to application and bringing this to practice? Uh, so a gaze model was um, developed. Uh, which uh, I call gaze-responsive light-driven model, uh, based off of our data. Uh, based of our data. So this is like the layout of it, but I'm going to tell you how it actually works. So if you have um, going back to the same same room, so you have uh, the room, you have your viewpoint. Let's say we start with one viewpoint, and as, as I said, you could go for a grid. Uh, then you pick a uh, view direction, whatever, it doesn't matter at this stage. Uh, uh, what you're going to have by uh, doing, of course, the simulations is to explore like uh, the brightest areas in the, in the field of view of that view direction. And then by knowing that and where it's placed, and of course, its intensity that might change, uh, this model helps you to derive uh, the shift and the avoidance uh, behavior or uh, re-predict uh, the, or predict the avoidance behavior towards um, or away from the, this glare source. So this is the result that you will get. And of course, you can explore this over um, occupied hours, which gives you different results over these occupied hours and maybe even explore them over the year uh, and see how that is going to change and what is the prediction that you're going to make. So uh, combining all of that, then you will have a, a sort of a, a frequency of these shifted gaze points that directs to where the main prediction or like the uh, main zone that, that the person would be looking at is depending on uh, this avoidance behavior. And then uh, the question is like, okay, um, if you have that, then you probably have a new scene because now you have another viewpoint and another condition. Uh, so of course, yes, you, you're going to have, uh, you, you're going to have to reevaluate this, which is uh, actually what we have uh, uh, tried to also avoid by or try to look into rather by making iterations in this whole simulation problem that lets you to, uh, with a certain resolution, look at uh, finally like what are the, where, where the, these um, shifted gaze, um, gaze directions fall. Uh, so these are uh, the results from, uh, from this building. So while you have all the shifted ones, then by binning them and by uh, looking at the highest frequency of them, you can see uh, where they fall over time, over the day, uh, under clear sky, under overcast sky, and uh, have an idea of what are the most um, areas that people would look at by avoiding the unwanted uh, situations. So this was this case. Uh, and yeah, the interesting thing was that uh, what uh, derived all these shifts was mainly the architectural, of course, the architectural spatial configurations that, uh, that made it. So the changes over time and so on didn't have an effect on where this shift fall, but of course the architectural um, uh, configuration. Uh, so um, on the later stage, what, we, what, I, what I'm doing at the moment is trying to apply this method in other contexts. Uh, for example, in office places where, where uh, we have oops, different shading systems. So this is a pending result. Uh, I'm not going to show you the result of this, but this is ongoing. So we're just uh, trying to apply the same method and also compare with uh, uh, daylight grail pr probability and see uh, what kind of uh, information that we get when we have different types of shading systems and using the same method over time with uh, gaze prediction and view direction. And also another application that we, we're going to, another project that we are working with uh, in order to apply the same 
uh, this same method is uh, within uh, uh, sort of uh, these uh, buildings with heritage value in Denmark. Uh, we're going to uh, look at these ones. The important thing, interesting thing about them is that uh, here we also don't have at all like at offices, at least if we want to direct the view, we would have the notion of task to, to relate to, but in these residential buildings, we don't have that at all. And also, um, we have these uh, dark uh, situations with bright uh, windows where um, are not captured uh, by any uh, glare metrics. Uh, and also, uh, uh, I, I have a student that is trying to validate what I've been working with. So this is an ongoing project. So it's a method, it's an idea that went through application and now is uh, hopefully going forward and being developed and being tested in other si situations. So finally, uh, a developing, um, a de a develop, um, uh, here a developing evaluation method and its application in practice was presented. Uh, importance of task area and layout design in uh, relation to light and excessive uh, glare um, uh, was shown. Uh, and. Uh, uh, what I would like to conclude with is that human behavior plays a really important role in design and we cannot neglect, neglect it. Uh, and for the future of this project, what I need to take into account is this attraction um, uh, behavior, which is not included at the moment in this clear prediction. Thank you so much.